we do now? Now we wait for the glass to clear out so we can make a break for your time machine. Hey, it's my mom. Hey. Don't talk to her. She could give us away. What the heck was Edna doing to you back there? She was trying to rebuild my personality from the ground up, erasing the parts she didn't like. Harsh. Shouldn't we go help? Once we go back and change history, none of this will ever happen. I guess. No offense, Your Honor, but why'd you marry Edna anyway? She's... she's kind of crazy. Yes, now. But back when we were first dating, her madness was tempered by an ironclad sense of right and wrong. At least, that's how it seemed to me at the time. Way to go. Dad. Where is the DeLorean anyway? I had the wreck towed to my secret lab near Clayton Ravine. Clayton Ravine? As in Clara Clayton? Why? Is that significant? Yeah. Clara's kind of supposed to be your wife, so yeah. Fascinating. Mom! Dad! No! They'll be fine. Once we repair the time stream, None of this will ever have happened. I guess you're right. Looks like the coast is clear. Great! Let's go fix the DeLorean. I'm afraid I'll have to do that without you, Martin. What? Why? Well, from what little I understand of time travel, if you help me rebuild the time machine, your presence in the repair efforts could cause some sort of temporal paradox after we return to 1931. So what am I supposed to do, just hang out here in Bizarro Hill Valley until you fix the time machine? Exactly. But don't worry, if things work out according to plan, you won't even notice I'm gone. You know, for a second there, you sounded almost as confusing as the real Doc. See? We're making progress already. See you soon, Martin. Good luck, Your Honor. Oh, and you want to stay off the streets for a few seconds. Stay off the street? Citizen Brown? Emmett? Doc? He's not ah. coming back, you know. What are you talking about? Emmett? Without me to guide him, he's almost useless. Before I found him, he was a miserable failure who never finished anything. But with me to inspire him, look at what we've built! Yeah, you've inspired him all right. Inspired him to turn Hill Valley into a bunch of uptight dorks. I wouldn't expect a delinquent like you to understand. You think you've inspired Doc? I'll have you know that without you, Emmett Brown is destined to build a time-traveling DeLorean and a flying time train. Preposterous. Emmett couldn't even build a dog feeder without me to guide him. Yeah, well he did that too. Not the only inspiration of Doc's life, you know. In my timeline, he married one of the sweetest women of the 19th century. Sweetness. Yeah. Emmett needs discipline to stay focused. He's so easily distracted. Okay, Your Honor. Starting to get a little concerned here. second I'm in the present, the next I'm six months in the past. Amazing. Six months? It took you six months to repair the time machine? Six months, my family fortune, and a sketchy deal with a gang of Libyan nationals. But it was all worth it for this moment. Ah! Emmett, don't do this. You need help. Oh, blow it out of your exhaust, poor dear. Now that I've escaped into the past, your pack of divorce lawyers can't... <gasps> Mark, how long have you been waiting for me? A couple of minutes, maybe. That's curious. 
I set the repair time circuits to arrive only a couple of seconds after I left. Oh, well, I'm sure there's no need for concern. It's probably just a minor miscalibration of the time circuits. Here. What's this? Close for our trip. We can't have you traipsing around 1931 in that ridiculous outfit. Wait, our trip? You didn't think I was going to let you erase the worst mistake of my life without my help, did you? Ouch. Fine! Leave! See, I don't... Oh. This is gonna sound bad. Time circuit set for August 26, 1931. You ready to go, Your Honor? Call me down. Edna to me is the kind of person that she's not bad. She just needs to be tempered. That's it. It's the same with anybody. I, I saw him. You, teenage you. You were headed this way, arm in arm with Edna. Oh, luckily, my erstwhile wife was never the time to kiss on a first date. If we work fast and stay focused, we can see to it that there. I mean, our relationship never moves beyond the hand holding stage. Well, will you look at that? The old town theater. Very cool. I haven't thought about this place in years. The missus made me tear it down back in 71. Said the movies were corrupting the younger generation. It was all nonsense, of course. I spent countless evenings here in my youth, and it never turned me into a hoodlum. Say, remember Public Enemy? Why, you dirty rat, no good yellow-bellied stool? Never did manage to see Frankenstein, though. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, you know, she just was tempered, because uh, I met people like that. They're really uptight. That's all they need. They have to have, meet somebody that's a little more mellowed out, and they need to... You know, it's, it's like... Uh, When two people get together, you you get traits off of them. It doesn't matter who it is. She just got some of the traits of being mellowed out. She'd be fine. She can still have some of the discipline and stuff that she has, but it's mellow out a little bit. That's why I don't think she's really that bad. I just think she went to the extreme case. This is all. But anyway, this is my opinion. Viewpoint. Doc, unfortunately, I don't think he would have been a good fit with her because he's more focused on other things, but it could have worked if he'd uh, kept her temper, that's all. But anyway, this is where we are, so. <laughs> but you're going to. That's what we're here for, remember? Right, of course. The film that was supposed to set off a chain reaction in my imagination, inspiring with a notion that would launch my scientific career. You've still got no memory of what that notion was? Well, how could I? It happened in the brain of a different Emmett Brown. An Emmett Brown now erased by the shifting sands of time. Luckily for us, I do know something about my own brain, having lived in it for the past 70 plus years. Once we get my younger self inspired by that movie, nothing will distract him from his proper... <gasps> Great Scott, will you look at that? Town Square? It's just like I remember it, only dirtier. Oh, the old courthouse. Come on now, Doc, you need to go inside oh. and check it out. First rule of time travel, Doc. Never allow your other self to catch sight of you. It could cause reality to collapse or something. You mean? Right behind you. Don't peek. Go on. I'll let you know when you're gone. And don't forget, you're Carl Sagan. The billions and billions guy? The suspected arsonist. Huh? Just go with it. Looking nice, isn't it? 
Mary! You do show up at the oddest moments. Where have you been hiding? Oh, you know, here and there, you're a little hard to pin down yourself. I went looking for you last night, but... I believe I was off entertaining a beautiful lady. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. You know, I never really got a chance to thank you. Well, I'm sure you would have escaped Kid on your own. Kid? Oh, sure, I'm grateful for that, but no, I'm talking about Edna. It's funny to think of now, but until that crisis, I actually thought Edna and I disliked one another. <laughs> Imagine! Yeah, well, sometimes first impressions are right. The thing is, you shouldn't let Edna distract you from, you know, the business at hand. Finishing your project for the expo and going to see Frankenstein. Oh, pshaw. Sure. I'm far too busy for movies these days. But, uh... And as for my project, it's practically done. The rocket car? The rocket car? Boy, are you out of date. I've junked the rocket car. But... More trouble than it's worth. I'll never figure out a propulsion system that does what I want it to do. And besides, its social utility is practically non-existent. Social utility? Social utility? Since when do you care about... The mental alignment meter is a much more worthy project. The what? It was Edna's idea, and she's really been cracking the whip to get me to complete it in time for the expo. Emin, I'm a little confused here. What day is it? Why, it's opening day! The opening day of the expo! Which reminds me, I'd better skedaddle back to the lab. If Edna catches me dawdling, there'll be heck to pay! Catch you around, Callahan! October 12th! Doc? He overshot us, dude! <laughs> Doc, what the hell? You gotta get that time thing fixed. Come to think of it, it is a bit brisk for all you. Oh, we're two months late. The expo's about to start, and Teenage U is already in over his head with Edna. I always did have a tendency to plunge into things. Let's plunge into the DeLorean and get to the right date. No, it's far too risky. Remember how I was late picking you up in 86? Yeah. That should have been a tip off. Something is horribly wrong with the time circuits, and the problem appears to be getting worse. If we try to jump now, we could find ourselves stranded in the Cenozoic Age. Ooh, who worse? The mess is over. Then we're stuck? For the time being. I'll look into the problem and see what I can do. In the meantime, you can go to work on the other problem. Right. I'll go to the lab and see if I can talk teenage you out of... If young me is already as infatuated as you say, you're not going to be able to talk him out of anything. Believe me, I remember. Better to focus on the more clear-headed half of the couple. Edna, where can I find her? Where do you think? I'll drive. The DeLorean should still function adequately as a means of conveyance in the first three dimensions. Okay. <laughs> you were right. There she is. My soon-to-be ex-future wife is nothing if not predictable. Do I really have to talk to her? I mean, couldn't I just hang out until you fix the time circuits and... Oh. I'll talk to her. You better get the DeLorean out of sight before someone... Hey you! Quit blocking the drive! All car of the future contestants need to report to the North Tent! Why not? Good luck! I don't even know what to say to her. What does she it, have to say? Edna? Oh, I, I haven't talked to her yet. Well, what are you waiting for? We need to get those kids separated. Okay. Part of McFly's here? Really? Hey, Artie! Officer! Officer? Oh, right. Don't blow your cover. Will you please keep your mind on the task at hand? K-1, 
can't talk right now. Spell it? B-R-O-W-N. It's not exactly an obscure name. I still don't see it on the list. I'm sorry. Oh, for the love... Let me try this one more time. This is the Hill Valley Science Expo, right? First annual. Indeed. The purpose of our fair is to showcase cutting-edge technology. That's right. And to burnish Hill Valley's reputation as a forward-thinking community. And yet, you want to exclude the maker of the most revolutionary breakthrough of all. It's not that I want to, but... Oh, dear... Mr. Callahan, you do pop up at the oddest times. What are you doing here? <laughs> well, none of these are ones I want to start the conversation off with. I need to... Whatever it is, I hope you don't have to deal with Mr. Stonewall here. His sole function seems to be preventing people from accomplishing their business. Honestly, with him keeping the books, it's a wonder the Tannen gang got as far as they did. Uh, Have you seen Emmett? Yeah, just now, in the town square. Oh, then you've heard all about his big breakthrough, the mental alignment meter. Isn't it exciting? And to think, he didn't even realize the import of his discovery until I pointed it out to him. I've never known anyone like him, so oblivious to his own potential. I kind of wanted to talk to you about Emmett and his potential. Funny, I didn't spot it myself at first. In fact, for the longest time, I thought I didn't even like him. <laughs> Yeah. I don't get it. I mean, Emmett's nice and all, but he's not exactly the kind of guy that has girls swarming all over him. Well, I'm not your average girl. Yeah, but... I appreciate your concerns, Mr. Callahan, but I can take care of myself. I know what I'm looking for in a man, and it so happens Emmett fits the bill to a T. That's Emmett Brown. Rhymes with clown, which I'm beginning to think you are. Just a simple mix-up, I'm sure. I've no doubt of that. Ahem. <clears throat> you said that Emmett fits your bill of requirements for a man. Yes. What would that list be, exactly? You'd make a good reporter, Mr. Callahan. You know that? Well, his physical appearance, for one thing. Emmett may not be Clark Gable, but he cleans up surprisingly well. I gave him my grandfather's white suit to wear at the expo. Oh, you should see him in it. He looks positively radiant. Looks good in a suit. Got it. And he's completely devoted to me. That's important. I've got no time or tolerance for playboys. Faithful as a Labrador. Check. Thirdly, and most important... Yes? Well, his mind, of course. It's brilliant, and it's virtuous through and through. His own mind map shows him to be a model citizen. Good brain, I see. And if it turned out that you were mistaken about any of these qualities... Say, what's your game? Uh, just curious, just trying to understand the female mind. Well, understand this. I'm not some faint-hearted girl who'd run away at the first hint of trouble. I've made a big investment in Emmett. Not money, but I've sunk all my ambitions into him. I'd have to be thoroughly disillusioned before I'd call it quits with Emmett. Got it? Uh-huh. Now, Mr. Cub Reporter, is there anything else? Emmett's a chick What the heck is this mental alignment meter of Emmett's? Oh, it's an absolutely revolutionary invention! Measures a person's affinities, what he's attracted to, what he's repulsed by, that sort of thing. Interesting. And it really works? Well, of course! What's the point of inventing something that doesn't work? Or, anyway, it works well enough for my purposes. So you say Emmett only has eyes for you? Absolutely. It's almost embarrassing how devoted he is to me. Well, it's good to hear he's finally settling down. Yes. Settling down? You know, ready to stop playing the field, as it were. Playing the... Oh, you're joking. Rather hard for me to picture Ammon as a chick magnet. Chick magnet? A guy who gets the girls, you know, motors running. Motors? Who makes them, y you know. 
You mean a sheik? Yeah. Well, it's a matter of taste, I suppose, but when he's properly pomaded and decked out in my grandfather's white suit, and it just glows, makes my heart flutter a bit just to picture him. You say you know Emmett as a model citizen, but you don't know him as well as I do. Did you know he once cheated some Libyans out of plutonium? Plutonium? What would Libyans want with plutonium? I'm sure he had a very good reason. Emmett's mind map demonstrates conclusively his brain is oriented toward virtue. Uh... Yeah and no. <laughs> I mean, in the grand picture, yes, but he's also not opposed to breaking a few things here and there. This one time, to power one of his science experiments, Emmett hijacked a train. Please, there hasn't been a train hijacking in Hill Valley since the days of Mad Dog Tannen. Wow, they brought that in. Emmett's done a lot of shady things in this time. My vice principal warned me to stay away from him. Your vice principal sounds like a dolt. It's your brother. <laughs> But I can't help feeling sorry for him. Who? All of Emmett's other girls, now that he's with you. Please, I think I know Emmett by now. There are no other girls. Hmm. He has a little black book. I wonder what's going to happen to Emmett's little black book. Little black book? Oh, it's legendary. That's what enabled Emmett to become the, uh, Valentino of Hill Valley High. Gee, I wonder if he'd let me have it. You must think I'm pretty gullible, Mr. Callahan. All right. That's all the questions I got. Very well, then. Hey, Artie. You seen my Orioli? You mean this? Yeah, thanks. She gets to come and go freely, and I'm forced to wait. I love it. <clears throat> to all who approach these hallowed halls, I bid thee welcome. Uh, to all who approach these hallowed halls, I bid thee welcome. To all who... Oh, hiya, kid. Say, aren't you the fellow who... Got you to turn on Kid Tannen? You bet. You look younger without your mustache. That was a dirty trick, you know, making me think Kid had gone and iced Artie. I'm sorry, but it was the only way I could... Ah, forget about it. I'm trying to. Yesterday's in the past. That's my motto. You gotta live for today. Right. So what are you doing down here anyway? Do you wish to pull the levers that control the future? Ah. Uh. At the expo, silly. Technology for a better tomorrow, and all that. Oh, uh, yeah, that's actually why I'm here. Whose idea was it to put a science and technology expo in Hill Valley? Heats me. Artie says it's all bread and circuses. But I ain't seen a single clown yet today. So, Artie's working for the expo too, huh? Oh, Artie's doing swell. The papers made a big deal of him testifying against Kid. People have been beating down his door ever since the trial. The Expo's darn lucky they could get him. What's Artie's job? Oh, he's a real high muckety muck at the Expo. He's in charge of all the money and the hiring and firing. Hey, not bad. You're telling me, and super respectable too. It's a real relief for him to have a job where the boss never pulls a gun on him. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> How's kids' trial going? Slowly. You know what they say. The wheels of justice grind slowly, but infinitely fine. Except in Hill Valley, where they don't move at all. What? Nothing. It's just, you know, something I heard once. So no regrets about turning him in? None at all. I should have known better than to take up with him in the first place. But what can I say? I was dumb. I let myself get taken in by his charm. Charm. So, who are you supposed to be? Don't you know your Homer? I am Techni Muse of Progress. You can tell by the lightning bolts. 
Must have slept through that class. I'm supposed to be a goddess like. I'm the one who inspires all the great men who make the discoveries. And women, too. Leave us not forget Madame Curie. I never would. So you work for the expo? Yeah, ain't it a kick? I greet all the important guests. And on the final day, I get to bestow the golden sundial on the winning contestant. Hmm. Techni, Muse of Progress. Not a bad gig. Audie got it for me. It's my entree into respectability. It's good to see that you and Artie are both doing okay. Oh, we're more than okay. And if things keep going the way they're going, we may be more than just friends before you know it. Well, don't get too serious too fast. Nah, we're keeping things casual for now. Good. I'm sure Grandma will appreciate that. Listen, I've got a proposal for you. I have this friend, right? No dice. I'm only seeing Audie now. It's not like that. See, my friend's in a relationship with Edna Strickland. Oh, poor schmuck. I wouldn't wish her on anyone. Then you wow. see where I'm coming from. He won't listen to reason, but I thought she might call it off if she thought he and you were, you know. Ah, you are an evil imp, ain't ya? Sometimes a guy's got to resort to underhanded tricks. What do you say? Sorry. Ah. Uh. Edna might be a pill, but if I play dirty tricks on every dame who disapproves of me, well, well, I'd, I'd play a lot of dirty tricks. Besides, such stunts are beneath the dignity of Techni, Muse of Progress. Hmm. Uh. Look, my friend Emmett really needs help. The one who's going out with Edna Strickland? You're darn right he needs help. I'm not asking you to actually seduce him. Just make her think that you two have a thing going. It'll drive her crazy. <laughs> I guess it would. So... Uh-uh. I wouldn't do that to another girl unless I was good and mad at her. And besides, it might tarnish my image as a muse. Okay, so I gotta get her good and mad at you. Or you, you good and mad at her. See you, Trixie. From this chamber of wonders, we bid you a fond adieu. Yeah, to be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of manipulating people into doing stuff, but alright. <laughs> hey, Artie! Can't Stop talk up. right now. Ahem. <clears throat> Back again, Mr. Callahan? What can I help you with? Well, I was thinking. I found out about Trixie Trotter. Yes? Apparently they made her some sort of queen of the festival. Techni, the muse of progress. They didn't. Well, they said this expo would give Hill Valley a reputation. I didn't realize this is what they meant. What have you got against Trixie? It's the idea of it. Allowing our city to be represented by a woman like that. I won't stand for it. As a socially conscious citizen, I demand you discharge that muse. Trixie? What's wrong with her? Oh, she's hardly qualified for an honorific post at a public event. Look, lady, she fits the costume, she's an American citizen, and she managed to memorize all her lines. What more qualifications do you want? Oh, these people are impossible! Why do you want to get Trixie fired? One simply can't allow women like that to attain positions of respect in society. It creates a very bad precedent for the future. Does it? But try telling it to this poor sap. She's got him completely steamrolled. That's how they operate. Is it? Still. I could get her discharged if I had the goods on her. No doubt a woman like that has left a trail of scandal, and I'd find it if I were still a reporter. But I haven't got time to do the legwork now. I'm too busy with Emmett and our... his invention. Hmm. So you wouldn't hesitate to get Trixie fired from her job? If I had the goods on her. She's obviously got her employer completely bamboozled. The only way to snap him out of his spell would be to show him something really shocking. That's all the questions I got. Very well, then. How about you? Have you got any questions for me? Uh, no. Then kindly let me pass. I'm afraid I can't. 
until I've located your registration form. Oh, this is absurd! Hmm. Hey, excuse me. Yeah? When does the expo Not open? Until tonight. Anybody without official business here, please get off the grounds! You got official business here? Yeah. Well, stay out of the way of the workers. You look familiar. Do I know you? Uh, nope. <coughs> I remember you. You were in the bar. Um... <laughs> this guy? Really? Okay. Hey, pal. Oh, jeez. This guy again. Funny, I was gonna say the same thing. Shouldn't you be in jail with the rest of Kid's gang? I was, but then an opportunity availed itself and I... Sang like a canary. I prefer to think of it as exhibiting an admirable sense of self-preservation. Will you be playing piano for Trixie later? Nah. Why not? Cause Little Miss Goody Two Shoes thinks she's too respectable for cue ball these days. You seem kinda angry about Trixie. Angry? Listen, kid, me and Trixie go way back. I know stuff about her that even kid doesn't know. Stuff that curl your socks. Really? Oh yeah. And now to see her flouncing around the place, making like her stink don't smell, it just well. It just cheeses me off, you know? So what's so, uh, toe-curling about Trixie's past? Yeah, like I'm gonna tell you. Oh, come on! No. Tell you what, I'll tell you something embarrassing about me first. Like what? Well, under the influence of alcohol, my mom made a pass at me. Ooh! All right, Junior, you win. That was pretty embarrassing. Almost as embarrassing as this. Is that Trixie? Yep. She's not wearing much. No kidding. She did a lot of these artistic postcards a few years ago. I got a whole set of them. Can I, um, have one? I don't know. You ain't gonna do nothing bad with it, are you? Hey, I promise. I'll only use it for the greater good. Well, okay. Have you heard from Kid lately? We're not exactly on speaking terms these days, on account of our varying degrees of incarceration. <laughs> yeah, I guess you got a point there. What kind of stuff have they got you all in here? How the heck would I know? Electro this, robo that, dynamo the other. It's all Greek to me. Hey, what's with your teeth? My teeth? Yeah, they're green. I don't know what you're talking about. Seriously, man, what's going on with your teeth? There's nothing. Nothing! I... I... Oh, crap. What's wrong? I thought it was just the game engine. It's these. Dr. Frinkle's algae cakes? A crate of them fell off the truck while I was unloading it and, uh... I just can't stop eating them. How was I to know they turned my teeth green? Well, the algae part might have been a clue. Please don't rat me out the audio, okay? I really need this job. No problem, but you better let me keep the cakes. Sure thing, pal. Hang loose, pal. You talk funny, mister. Hey, there's one of the guys I actually like that was a gangster. Yeah, it's a good thing these things never caught on. Trixie sure got some nice, uh, antlers. This is definitely something Edna wouldn't approve of. It's gonna be bad if I'm right and that is his grandmother he's got a picture of. <laughs> How about an algae cake? Yes, I am feeling a bit peckish. Yes, eat up, my friend. <laughs> Where the hell did you get that crap? The expo. 
How about an algae cake? Don't mind if I do. Not bad. Algae, you say? I'm going to suggest that they add that to the menu at the orphanage. Oh, all right. Well, we're going to have to end this here because uh, they're done. So, when we bring this back up, uh, we'll continue on the story. Till then, I'm a really good gamer. Y'all take it easy. I'll catch you next time.